Hey guys, Thunder E here, and as you can clearly see, it's all about gaming and the heart for gamers with the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro versus the Red Magic 9 Pro. This one's gonna be very interesting because we're gonna see what the best gaming phone is quite early in this year uh, for 2024. As I mentioned, the Asus ROG Phone 8 Pro is a redesign of the ROG Phone space in terms of design and build. You've got this nice uh, graphite looking back as you can see. And then you also have the Animatrix animation which Asus has been using on a lot of their laptops built into the device as well and of course a brand new camera hump. That is where Asus talks about going beyond gaming here with the camera sensors you will find on the regular, you know, uh, Zen phone devices. You can find it here on this gaming device. Now, this shouldn't be lost that this is not a gaming device because it's packed with a ton of features. You've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. You've also got the new Ultimate Cooling with some very interesting uh, cooling layers set up on this device to make sure that your cooling is solid. You've got shoulder triggers as well and you've got two USB ports, one on the side and of course one on the back plus a headphone jack. So everything you need uh, for that gaming performance. Now don't think that the Red Magic 9 Pro is a slouch in every respect. This thing looks absolutely lovely. It comes in three different color variants. I do have the transparent black here. As you can see, it clearly says Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on it. Uh, and you know Red Magic comes with a built-in fan. That fan is faster and also quieter as you use it. You've got a dual camera setup here. And with the Red Magic phones, you do have your shoulder buttons, which do light up, as well as also what I like to call the gaming switch which takes you straight into the gaming hub for the Red Magic phone. There is one USB port at the bottom and a headphone jack on the top. So now that we have some of the early specs out of the way, let's take a look at the displays for both devices. 6.7 inches for the Asus ROG uh, Phone 8 Pro, as well as 6.8 on the Red Magic. Both of them are really good. You've got high refresh rates on both displays, with the Asus leading the pack at 165 hertz, while the Red Magic is at 120. That being said, that doesn't mean that, of course, you will find games to match that. So jumping into benchmarks with Geekbench 6, we have some interesting numbers where the numbers are very close for both devices as you can clearly see. Both the ASUS and the Red Magic 9 Pro got above 2,000, 2,250 for the ASUS, 2,272 for the Red Magic, while the ASUS got 7,135 for multi-core and Red Magic got 7,108. Really close numbers. And when we look at GPU performance for both of them, uh, we can see that GPU is also quite interesting with 14,326 for the Asus, while 14,885 for uh, the Red Magic. Close numbers in, you know, overall, but really high and impressive numbers. Now, taking a look at 3D Mark scores here, we're gonna to go to Wildlife Extreme. And here, the numbers are close again with the Asus winning at 5,208. Uh, and the Red Magic at 5,167. Average frame rate is 31 uh, frames per second for the Asus, 30 for the Red Magic. You can see the numbers really close, 97% uh, scores, uh, great temperatures and battery performance all around. We also did a solar bar score as well, where the Asus got 8,689. Uh, frame rate average was 33, while the um, uh, the Red Magic got 8,694 with a frame rate of 33 as well. So again, really close numbers all the way through. But what does that mean for us while we game? So we started off with, of course, Call of Duty Mobile. And playing Call of Duty Mobile, both devices were set to the highest settings you'd expect. And starting off with Asus, we got a solid clean 120 frames per second. Now, that's pretty solid and really great performance overall. Uh, I did like it as well as also the um, Red Magic 9 Pro did a solid 120 frames per second. Both devices handled really well and as you can see it ran very, very well. Now we went over to PUBG Mobile where 
The Seuss has the capability of running at 90 frames per second gameplay. So we played that and it ran a solid 90 frames per second, which is pretty nice to see. Uh, played really well, no issues, no slowdowns. Then with the Red Magic 9 Pro, we couldn't do that, but we were able to do both uh, smooth extreme at 60 frames per second locked solid. And then of course, uh, Ultra HD Ultra at 40 frames per second. Again, that ran well, that, that did good. Now, some would say that is better with ASUS, but I just think it's something where the game has to be optimized or at least updated for the Red Magic to actually hit those numbers because in terms of benchmarks, they're pretty much the same. Now, when we move over to Genshin Impact, this is where I also included some of my temperature tests. Uh, ASUS ROG Phone uh, 8 Pro, this did a solid 60 frames per second for 30 minutes. Now, you can see the press uh, announcements from all, both companies. They talked about how they can play Genshin for 30 minutes at 60 FPS. What I wanted to see was what temperatures would be with the new cooling chambers with the ASUS device. And it did pretty well. It went up to about 42 degrees uh, at around the 15 minute mark. Then I went ahead and applied the new aero cooler. Now this should bring the temperatures down by I believe uh, 10 to 15%. And it did a good job, brought the temperatures down to 30 eight degrees as I continue to play. And it stayed at 38, you know, going through another 15 minutes of gameplay. So I think with the cooler on, you will get that solid cool temperature at around 38 or slightly lower. And I think it dipped down when I switched from uh, Genshin Impact to about 34. Now, what about the Red Magic 9 Pro, which has that built-in cooler there? Now, once you start playing, usually you can set the coolers to turn on once you fire up a game or whatever situation you want to. Also in the case, you can use the cooler while you are charging your device, keeping your device cool. And with Genshin Impact, we're able to play 30 minutes at 60 frames per second. But what's interesting is the temperature stayed at around 38, 39 degrees the whole time. So that built-in cooler really comes in handy and it wasn't loud. It's about 22 to 25% uh, quieter. So which means you're getting less noise and get, still getting higher cooling um, rates with the inbuilt cooler. And it does just as well as the external cooler. So I think that's a huge win for Red Magic. Now, both devices do have game centers you can go into, which is quite interesting, giving you a lot of customization in there. Now with the ASUS ROG Phone 8 Pro, you can tap the X button and that gets, takes you into the console mode where you can select different options for your performance, dynamic or ultra. You can also go into the anime vision, which is the, um, of course, the animated logos are behind your, your device, which gives you a bunch of customizations there where you can change, have customizations for music, notifications, charging, um, the ROG logo screen on and off while you're gaming, recording, all those things built in. I also have customizations for your Aero Cooler as well. Now, the other thing too is you do have the Game Genie when you are gaming. And this also gives you more, more um, customizations. You can pull that from the either top or left right hand corner. And that gives you the, able to, the ability to customize, say like the on-screen FPS uh, counter. You can also turn off notifications. You can add in a cursor. There are many functionalities built into this and that's pretty nice. Now with the Red Magic 9 Pro, you do have something similar, but Red Magic also has that game button uh, on the side, which is really cool. That slider works well with, no matter where you are, you want a game, you hit the slider, and then it takes you straight into the game center. Uh, the Red Magic Game Center allows you to customize everything for each game, fully customizable, and also some really, really uh, great plugins, including one for Diablo mode, which is a higher performance mode that moves your clock speed up to 3.3 gigahertz per second. And it has similar features uh, when you go into your game where you can swipe from the left uh, twice, and that will bring up your in-game menu, and you can do a lot of customizations with the trigger buttons as well as some of the game functions as well, which is pretty nice. Now, some of you ask about emulators. Now, Snapdragon uh, AGN3 runs emulators really well, and you only see that performance all the way through. Looking at PSP emulator playing God of War there, it ran well on both the ASUS as well as the Red Magic 60 frames per second, 10X resolution on both devices, 
really solid. You can see how well it handles on the ASUS, as well as also the Red Magic. And moving over to the uh, GameCube emulator, Dolphin emulator, played F-Zero GX, which ran at 60 FPS, uh, as well as also Star Wars Rogue, Rogue Leader, which also ran at 60 FPS, although I did have to drop it down to 1080p for those two GameCube games, uh, which also did the same on the Red Magic as well. So performance for emulators for both of them were really solid, and I think a lot of people were like that. Now, as you're gaming, audio is really important, and I want you guys to take a listen to the speakers of both devices to see how well they sound. Now, when it comes to speakers, We've heard audio from both the ROG Phone 8 Pro and the Red Magic 9 Pro, and the clear winner is the ROG 8, 8 Pro. Now, even though the ROG doesn't have the dual front-facing speakers anymore, it just sounds, sounds better and sounds clearer than what Red Magic does have. Red Magic is loud, but it's not as clear and it's not as rich in the bass there. So, speakers, Asus ROG 8 Pro wins. Then, what about battery life? Now, both devices have some really large batteries and we do have a 5,500 milliamp battery on the ASUS ROG Phone 8 Pro, while we have a 6,500 milliamp battery on the Red Magic 9 Pro. And that 6,500 milliamps really showcases on the Red Magic. That battery lasts a really long time and it is great for all use cases. So in terms of battery life, it takes the cake here, even though the ASUS Red Magic 8 Pro has a really good battery. So the last thing I want to talk about are the cameras. Now, the ASUS has talked about how they've actually gone past gaming and giving you flagship cameras on your device. So I want to see how it stands against the Red Magic 9 Pro. Now Red Magic also has something very interesting where they have an under display camera in the front. And I'll just say this right now, let's just stop doing that until we perfect that technology because the camera, even though it is better than what I've seen in the Galaxy Fold, it's still not great. It doesn't compete with the ASUS and it's just something that shouldn't be, shouldn't be on any device till it's improved. But what about the rear cameras? Let's take a look at some of the images and video from them. Honestly, I think the image quality is very similar with the Red Magic winning in some situations uh, and Asus winning in others uh, as well. So I'm not sure where the leg up is for Asus in the camera department. I think some of the video is better, but I want to know what your thoughts are. And I want to know what your thoughts are in general between two devices here. Do you think the Asus um, ROG Phone 8 Pro is still the leader in mobile gaming the smartphones, or do you think that the Red Magic uh, 9 Pro has taken that crown, especially early on in the year? Now, the reason I say that is also when you look at price, uh, the Asus um, ROG Phone 8 Pro is priced at uh, $1,000, um, and $99, while the Red Magic, you can get it for about 920. Now, ASUS also goes up to 24 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. So let me know your thoughts, guys. Who do you think won this battle vid? Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy the entertainment.